Tikkat Publication Society was founded by the sixth Lubavitch Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak, who arrived in the United States in 1940. Upon arriving in the free world, the Rebbe saw the importance of transmitting all the accumulated knowledge of his predecessors to be able to preserve that heritage, a very rich heritage, and bring it to the new world. In 1942, he founded the publishing house. He put his son-in-law, who would later become the seventh Rebbe, in charge and director of the publication house. So it was under the Rebbe's direction that God Publication Society flourished and became the worldwide phenomenon that it is. The Rebbe was the repository of all the writings of his predecessors, going back eight generations. And then when the persecution of the Jews took hold, first in Russia, then by the Nazis, uh, he had to do a lot of traveling, trying to escape the onslaught. And as a result of that, a significant portion of the library, including the precious manuscripts, many precious manuscripts were lost, crates of manuscripts were lost, until we received a mysterious collection of microfilms and we uh, looked at the microfilms under a microfilm reading machine, we realized immediately that these were a part of the long lost manuscripts belonging to the Chabad community and uh, we immediately set out to find out where they got them from and we traced it to the uh, Jewish Institute in, in, in Warsaw in Poland. And it was about December of 1977 that we received the shipment of whatever they had in the library that rightfully belonged to Chabad. And uh, our team of scholars uh, studied them, and the Rebbe wanted that they be prepared as soon as possible for publication. And over the years, they were annotated with source material and all kinds of source material to make it easier for the scholar to study, and uh, published and made available to the Jewish masses all over the world. When we decide on a certain book that we want to take um, from the original Hebrew, we take manuscripts and then there's a process of translating them where we have a team of scholars, an international team of scholars, that will take the original Hebrew material and translate it into English. And then after that, there's, a, there's an extensive editorial process where that translation is edited, as well as uh, copious footnotes are added that explain the text. Then after that, there is the stage of typeset and, and layout, where the, um, the actual Hebrew and English text, as well as the footnotes, are all laid out and typeset in a, in a very aesthetically appealing manner. And then you have the graphic design of the cover, where that's, uh, again, designing a, a book cover that's appealing. And then finally, production, printing, and publishing them in a way that it will reach a very wide audience. Our readership is as has the variety of, of, of human nature. Um, we have books for children from when they're born, practically, from, from toddler age to uh, childhood, adolescence, and beyond. And there are books on Hasidic literature, and there are books that are halachic texts, Jewish law. There are books that are stories uh, for teenagers or stories for pre-adolescent people. The Rebbe set in motion the Chabad Research Center, which also did the translation of all these materials into the languages spoken by the people today. In the United States it was in English, but we publish in some 12 languages, maybe 15 languages, and that's our goal, to be able to provide good reading material uh, for children, adults, and whatever's in between. Kahas has, a, has an online store where, it sells, uh, where we sell all the volumes, as well as other bookstores that carry our products. We have a network of stores that really operate around the world. Wherever there are Jews, there are Kahas books. Interestingly enough, the Rebbe was so desirous of people having the opportunity to study these books that he would even say that the price, the cost, even though the price per book would have been very, very expensive considering all the energy going into it and all the time and the cost, they were sold and still are sold for way, way below cost. 
because it is, he felt it was a special mission to get those books published and out into the world for anyone who wants to benefit from it. I think people, in the, in the most part, underestimate how much money, time, effort, and resources are involved in the publication of even one volume. And th these are the type of books that, without the work that we're doing, they would remain inaccessible to the, to the masses, and people would not, not be able to, uh, to have these books otherwise. Sages tell us that when someone studies the printed work of a departed, a righteous person. That person's soul on high evokes mercy upon the person who made that possible. And it, it is with the generosity of people of this nature that we could publish and continue to publish uh, these, these books. When you realize that a book that a person will make possible to be published, you never know how widely disseminated that book is going to be, who's going to see it, what the impressions will be on this, those who study it and the readers, uh, it'll have to be, it's, in all cases, beneficial. And it's all traceable back to that person's vision.